I suppose the question now becomes, where do we put all of this snow? And I know a lot of people are struggling with this because the snow banks just keep growing and growing. Uh, yes, we do have that Arctic feeling. The temperatures remain cold uh, for the next while. In fact, we really don't see much of a change in the temperatures, although a little bit better perhaps for the weekend, but there's more snow in the forecast. Not a lot this time. It won't be like this. <laughs> A lot of people ended up with a lot of snowfall, generally between 15 and 25 centimeters of snow, some enhancement from the lake uh, on the west end side of Lake Ontario with the winds coming from the east over the lake. So we ended up with a sizable amount of snowfall. And I hope that you have found a place to put all of that extra snow. Snow banks in my front yard are very, very high, and I'm sure you can relate. Well, in most cases here, we've seen very decent snowfall, but here's the thing. Life carries on in a Canadian metropolis, right? Like in Toronto. It's just business as usual. Carrying on, people are, you know, getting out their big heavy coats for the cold and making sure that they're dressed appropriately. Good footwear, that is the key when you've got slippery conditions like we've had. So we do have to be dressing warmly. However, we don't really see much save for heading into tomorrow some lake effect and that would be Georgian Bay uh, west sorry east end Lake Ontario because it's a west wind and eastern uh, superior shores those regions are likely to pick up a little bit more lake effect heading into Friday but overall it's just the cold we're contending with it's not until Saturday and Sunday that we see some more system snow coming our way however it's not likely going to be a massive snowstorm, a bit of a nuisance, kind of adding insult to injury, so to speak, because this will bring maybe upwards of two centimeters. Although that's what it looks like now, however, things can change, so we'd want, you definitely want to be keeping tabs on any changes in the forecast. Of course, if it happens, we'd be the first to let you know. But this is going to be uh, a snowy weekend for some around Toronto. Not a lot of snow, though, this time. Temperatures, though, staying cold. Wind chills in the minus teens. We really don't rebound uh, very much by even mid part of next week. In Hamilton's case, a wind chill of minus eight there by next Thursday. So that's you know a week away that we have to wait for some decent uh, temperatures to come through. So it has definitely been a cold one. Looking at the probability of precipitation, overall it stays fairly low. The exception of that Sunday snow, it only sits at 40 percent. And same for Oshawa, a 40 pop with a minus six and some light flurries on Sunday. Go to the Weather Network. Were you watching all the Stormwatch coverage yesterday? Well, Nate Coleman, of course, was out there in the thick of it. And now he's going to be covering a story today about the impact of the snow uh, with regard to skiing. I, you know, I think that with the Stormwatch having now gone and the snow on the ground and temperatures staying below average, but not really that bad, we see a lot of sun and cloud the next four or five days across Atlantic Canada. A great time to go out skiing. He's actually going to head to Windsor and check out what the snow has meant to them, not only this most recent storm, but of what the season's been like. But I couldn't help but to notice when I was on their website, there's a, this weather button at the top here, the Weather Network weather button. And for those of you who are business owners out there and you want to add your own weather button to perhaps your own website to keep your audience informed of the weather, you can actually do that. And I don't know that a lot of people know about this feature, but on our website at the bottom, you'll see a, a, a button <laughs> for weather buttons. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Uh, but it gives you an idea here, just a snapshot of some of the different styles of weather buttons that you can actually, if I can get it down, all the different uh, weather buttons. And the list actually goes on and you can just pick whichever dimensions fit your website. So having said that, let's move on to some weather statistics in Atlantic Canada. This is interesting. and We were looking at these numbers and, and pouring over them. We were kind of surprised versus St. John's at 221. Maybe a lot of that came from the sea effect because we've been talking about that over and over and the impact that the sea has been having with regard to the snow across the east. Now, speaking of water, on the Great Lakes, on the other hand, they were starting to shut down the lake effect machine, so to speak, because a lot of the lakes are now covered in ice. Lake Erie 94 versus Lake Michigan at 52%, but look at Lake Ontario, 30% covered in ice. So that means there's still lots of available uh, water, moisture, open water essentially to be able to put down more lake effect. And there are some, some uh, watches for squalls actually around the Belleville area as a result of that. So looking at the Great Lakes region, it's been worse in Ottawa, 180 centimeters of snow so far. And then we zoom it into just Toronto Pearson. And you can see that we've had quite a bit of snow already. This weather. 
Right now, we are dealing with a where are we going to put all the snow? That is the question. So we're dealing with huge snow banks and nowhere more to put the snow. Well, that Arctic feeling is still with us and will remain that way for the next while. In fact, we really don't see um, much of a warm up in the forecast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's take a look at the snowfall totals. How much snow came with our big storm yesterday? Well, you know what, Toronto between 15 and 25 centimeters. We had more snow in Boston though, 30 centimeters. Uh, back into uh, Topeka, 33 centimeters of snow. And I know one person who was out there covering the storm and also measuring it. We're noticing not a lot of volume on the roads uh, through the evening on Wednesday. And really, I think people are heeding all the warnings and, and taking our advice and staying off the roads. As soon as people got home after their evening commute, they called it a day. And that's great. Now, let's talk about snowfall mounts because at Pearson, we had seen 14 centimeters of snow. Now, there's been a lot of blowing and drifting snow, so it's... I can't guarantee that this is exactly accurate, but here we have 26 centimeters of snow and we're not too far from our Oakville studios. Pretty intense. All right, I'm going to send it back to you inside with what more we can expect weather-wise. Well, what we can expect is a bit more lake effect for some localized regions. Did you know that at Pearson, it was 14.9 officially, but it did break a daily record for February 5th. So. Not as much snow at the airport as there was downtown or Downsview, for example. Uh, there was more snow than at Pearson itself, which they're not all that far from one another, but the snow totals really varied depending on where you were across southern Ontario. In terms of winds this afternoon, they're from the west or southwest. As a result of that, there are some areas that may see some more additional lake effect. There are some watches in place around Belleville up toward uh, Perry Sound, Georgian Bay, and even Eastern Superior, about five centimeters of snow could come as a result of those winds over the relatively warmer waters of the Great Lakes. <laughs> Were you watching all the Stormwatch coverage yesterday? Well, Nate Coleman, of course, was out there in the thick of it, and now he's gonna be covering a story today about the impact of the snow uh, with regard to skiing. I, you know, I think that with the storm watch having now gone and the snow on the ground and temperatures staying below average but not really that bad, we see a lot of sun and cloud the next four or five days across Atlantic Canada. A great time to go out skiing. He's actually going to head to Windsor and check out what the snow has meant to them, not only this most recent storm but of what the season's been like. But I couldn't help but to notice when I was on their website, there's a, this weather button at the top here, the Weather Network weather button. And for those of you who are business owners out there and you you want to add your own weather button to perhaps your own website to keep your audience informed of the weather you can actually do that and I don't know that a lot of people know about this feature but on our website at the bottom you'll see a, a, a button <laughs> for weather buttons <laughs> makes sense right uh, but it gives you an idea here just a snapshot of some of the different styles of weather buttons that you can actually if I can get it down all the different uh, weather buttons and the list actually goes on and you can just pick whichever dimensions fit your website. So having said that, let's move on to some weather statistics in Atlantic Canada. This is interesting and we were looking at these numbers and, and pouring over them, we were kind of surprised versus St. John's at 221. Maybe a lot of that came from the sea effect because we've been talking about that over and over and the impact that the sea has been having with regard to the snow across the east. Now, speaking of water, on the Great Lakes, on the other hand, they were starting to shut down the lake effect machine, so to speak, because a lot of the lakes are now covered in ice, or at least almost entirely covered in ice, versus Lake Michigan at 52%. But look at Lake Ontario, 30% covered in ice. So that means there's still lots of available uh, water, moisture, open water essentially to be able to put down more lake effect. And there are some, some uh, watches for squalls actually around the Belleville area as a result of that. So looking at the Great Lakes region snowfall as of today, February 6th, Toronto, 83 centimeters. It's been worse in Ottawa, 180 centimeters of snow so far. And then we zoom it into just Toronto Pearson, and you can see that we've had quite a bit of snow already. Right now, we are dealing with a, where are we going to put all the snow? That is the question. So, we're dealing with huge snow banks and nowhere more to put the snow. Well, that Arctic feeling is still with us and will remain that way for the next while. In fact, we really don't see um, much of a warm up in the forecast. Thank you so much for 
Tuning in, let's take a look at the snowfall totals. How much snow came with our big storm yesterday? Well, you know what? Toronto, between 15 and 25 centimeters. We had more snow in Boston, though, 30 centimeters. Uh, back into uh, Topeka, 33 centimeters of snow. And I know one person who was out there covering the storm and also measuring it. We're noticing not a lot of volume on the roads uh, through the evening on Wednesday and really I think people are heeding all the warnings and, and taking our advice and staying off the roads. As soon as people got home after their evening commute, they called it a day and that's great. Now let's talk about snowfall amounts because at Pearson we had seen 14 centimeters of snow. Now there's been a lot of blowing and drifting snow so it's I can't guarantee that this is exactly accurate, but here we have 26 centimeters of snow and we're not too far from our Oakville studios. Pretty intense. All right, I'm going to send it back to you inside with what more we can expect weather-wise. Well, what we can expect is a bit more lake effect for some localized regions. Did you know that at Pearson, it was 14.9 officially, but it did break a daily record for February 5th. So. Not as much snow at the airport as there was downtown or Downsy, for example. Uh, there was more snow than at Pearson itself, which they're not all that far from one another, but the snow totals really varied depending on where you were across southern Ontario. In terms of winds this afternoon, they're from the west or southwest. As a result of that, there are some areas that may see some more additional lake effect. There are some watches in place around Belleville up toward uh, Perry Sound, Georgian Bay, and even Eastern Superior, about five centimeters of snow could come as a result of those winds over the relatively warmer waters of the Great Lakes.